Following on from the single LED in Python video, let's now look at setting up multiple LEDs and creating a few functions to control how they behave. Let's first go over the Arduino wiring setup. You will need an Arduino, seven male to male jumper wires, a breadboard, three 220 ohms resistors, three LED lights of your preferred color choice. First connect a jumper wire to the ground pin on your Arduino and to the negative bus. This will allow the whole column to be used as a ground connection. Then connect three male-to-male -male jumper wires, one side on the same column as the ground connection, the other side a few rows away leaving one row free at the end, which our LEDs will be connected to. Space these out so that there is enough room to work with. Now we can connect the three LEDs, the negative side, which is the shortest side on the LED should be on the same row as the three jumper wires we just connected. The positive side of the LED which is the longest side should be on the next row down. Now, connect three 220 ohm resistors between the positive side of the LEDs, leaving a row at the end before the positive and negative buses for another jumper wire to go into. Then, finally to complete the circuit, Connect a jumper wire from pin 12 to the end of the first resistor. Connect a second jumper wire from pin 11 to the end of the second resistor, and connect a third wire from pin 10 to the end of the third resistor. This will complete the circuit and allow a current to flow through pins 10 to 12 when programmed, then through the resistor to reduce the voltage supplied so that the LED doesn't burn out. Then into the LED, and back out through the ground connection. Let's now create a Python script to do this. First open idle and create a new script called multiple LEDs. Then from PyFormata import Arduino and also import the time library. Declare a variable called board which will be used to connect to our Arduino and enter the USB port name that the Arduino will be connected to. Here my USB port is named COM3. Now we can start creating variables for our pins 10 to 12. Start with pin 10 and use the get pin method within the brackets type, D, which stands for digital pin, 10, which is the pin number, and O, which stands for output as we will be using the pin to output a current. Do the same for pins 11 and 12. Next we can test that our code is working fine by using the right method on our pins and setting the value to 0. 0 means that no current will flow through our pins. First connect your Arduino to your computer, and then run the code, there should be no errors. Now that we know the script works, change the values in the write statement to one for each pin. This will allow current to flow through the pins. If we run the code again now, the LEDs on our Arduino should all be lit up. Let's put our write statements so far inside of a function called all on. This will stop it running at launch so that we can control when we want to turn them on. Let's now create a simple user interface by importing the Tinter library, then creating a window for our interface, setting the title of the window to multiple LEDs, setting the window state to zoom so that it opens full screen, and setting the background color to black. We can then close the window main loop at the bottom of the script. The next thing we want to do is create a button that will call our LED on function. Let's call this button 1 and set the text to all on. We only want the code to run when we press the button, so we can use the lambda method to call the function. Then place the button on the screen at the X and Y location of 50. We also need a method to turn the LEDs off, so copy and paste the all on function and change the name to all off. Then change the right value to 0 which will stop the flow of current through pins 10 to 12. We need to create a new button for this function, so copy button 1 and rename as button 2, change the button text to all off and change the lambda function call to all off as well. Then change the place x value to 350. Now if we run the code and click the all off button then the all on button, the relevant function will run and our LEDs will turn off or on. That's great! Now let's create a new button called button 3 which we can use to cycle through the LEDs turning one on at a time in a pattern. 
Change the text of this button to cycle and change the lambda function call to cycle also. Change the place x value to 650. Let's now create the new function called cycle, as we want the LEDs to light up one at a time. First use the right method for pin 10. Then type time.sleep to pause the script for a third of a second, then use a write statement for pin 11, then again pause for a third of a second, and finally write to pin 12. Copy and paste the section of code as we want to do the same but to turn the pins off one by one as well. So replace the write value from a 1 to a 0 to turn the current off. We want this process to repeat on a loop, so at the top of the function call a while loop so that it keeps running. We will need a way to break out of the loop when we want to run another function, so let's create a variable that we can store whether the cycle button has been clicked or not into. Above the function create a variable called state and assign it the value of 0. Then in our cycle function declare the global variable state. In our while loop, check if state equals 0. If it does then break out of the current function. When the cycle button is pressed we want to make the value of state equal to 1, so write this above the while true statement. When any other button is pressed we want to set the value of state back to a 0 which will break out of the cycle function's while true statement. So declare the global variable state inside the on and off function and set the value to 0. Now if we run the code and click cycle, the LEDs will start turning on one by one and off one by one. There is an issue without code at the moment though, if we press any other button. The script will freeze or crash. This is because, when the while loop is running, we can't activate any other button at the same time quick enough to break out of the cycle function. Due to the time sleep method pausing our script from executing any other commands. We can fix this though by using a method called threading which can be used to run multiple tasks at the same time. First create another function inside our cycle function called run, above the while true statement, then at the top of the script, import the threading library. Then back in the cycle function at the bottom backspace twice and type thread equals threading dot thread and set the target to our run function. Then on the next line down use the thread start method to start threading. This will allow the while loop inside of the run function to be ran separately from the main body of code. If we now run the code again, turn our cycle on, then click any other button, the LEDs will turn on and off accordingly. Let's now make one final function that makes the LEDs blink on and off all at the same time. Copy the code for button 3 and paste it. Rename as button 4 and change the button text to blink and the lambda function to blink. Then change the place x location to 950. Then create a new function called blink. We'll need to check whether the button for this has been pressed or not so above the function. Create a variable called state2 and set its value to 0. Then declare the global variable state2 within the blink function and set its value to 1. In all the other functions, we will need to declare the same global variable and set the value to 0. In our blink function let's then create another function called run, which will hold our while loop, and create a return clause to break out of the function if state2 is equal to 0. Then use the right method to set pins 10 to 12 to a 1 which will turn the LEDs on, then add a time.sleep for one second. Then copy and paste the pin write statements and change the value in them to zero, which will turn the LEDs off, and finish by adding another time.sleep for one second at the end. We can now finish by backspacing to break out the run function and create another instance of threading within the blink function. This will allow the blink function to run in parallel with our main body of code. Before we run the code, for our cycle and blink functions, we want to reset the current in our pins to zero before we start our loops. This will stop any lighting glitches you may come across when moving from one function to another. So in the cycle and blink function call the all-off function before the code for the function starts. 
Now if we run our code, we should see that we have a new button called blink that when pressed will allow the LEDs to blink on and off. All our buttons should work correctly now. This concludes the video on working with multiple LEDs in Python and Arduino. Have a go at creating your own lighting functions that use a different light pattern sequence. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.